this year is a time, this service is a time for you to sit down and reflect on the many blessings that God has bestowed upon you. You are going to need paper and a pencil or a pen for full participation in our Thanksgiving service. So you might want to pause it here and go get those items if you don't have them handy. Some of my people, you already have space designated on the back of your worship bulletin, but if you went and grabbed a sheet of paper, we suggest drawing three boxes or breaking it into three boxes so you have a space for each of the three times that you are going to stop and reflect throughout the service. of gratitude. O oh God, at the time of creation, you made man and woman in your own image, and you have placed special people into our lives who continue to reflect your image in their love, care, and support for us. Thank you, Lord, for the people who have shared their lives with us. You promised your chosen people, dear God, a place for them to dwell, a land flowing with milk and honey. By your mighty hand, they reached that promised place and made it their home. You have led us to special places, to places that sustain us, comfort us, and refresh us in our faith and life. Thank you, Lord, for the places that draw us closer to you, to one another, and to the world around us. You knew just what your chosen people needed when you rained down manna and quail from heaven for them to eat. In much the same way, you have rained down the things we need to enrich and sustain our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of special things that nourish and protect our bodies, call to mind memorable moments, and simply bring us joy. Let us pray. In thanksgiving, we come before you, Lord God of all, grateful for the many blessings of this day which you have showered upon us. Dwell with your people here on earth, as we live and work to serve you and one another more and more. Inhabit the places where we spend our time, that we may be strengthened in the spaces where we work, play, worship, and relax. Grant to us the things we need to support this body and life, but help us not to cling to the things of this earth so tightly that we lose our grip on you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. A reading from the first chapter of Colossians. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. 
since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing as it also does among you. Since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in the manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Lord who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. You can just feel the love that St. Paul has for the Colossian people in these verses, can't you? And we can learn a lot about being thankful and how we interact with people from this reading, can't we? Paul starts off by saying, We thank God for you, and we pray for you. Today is a day for us to really show how thankful we are to God for the people in our lives. That might mean telling someone you love, I thank God for you, and then telling that person why you are so thankful to God for him or her. That might mean sending a nice card to someone you normally spend Thanksgiving Day with. That might mean calling up a family member who is very special to you. It might mean including the names of people you love in the prayer you say at the dinner table. However you wish to do it, show people in some way how grateful you are for their presence in your life. Paul showed his gratitude for people in his life in another way too, by speaking to other people whom he found faithful, like his friend Epaphras. People are encouraged and sustained by the stories of others who have remained faithful to the Lord in their service to him. When was the last time you spoke well of someone to another person in your life? When we make a point of highlighting the good qualities in a person in our conversations with others, we are spurred on to be better people ourselves. This leads to another important aspect of this passage from Paul. We sense in this letter that there is a certain symbiosis or synergy going on amongst the people. They are relying on one another and helping each other. They are bearing fruit and increasing in the knowledge of God, thanks to one another. How are we helping one another to bear fruit and increase in our knowledge of God? Well, for starters, you're doing it right now by worshiping God, reflecting on your faith journeys, and reading scripture together here online as we are able. So we need to be there for one another, whatever it takes even when that looks different than it ever has before and takes some more creative energy than it did a year ago. That's why God designed the church. We are the communion of saints together, even when worshiping apart. So today I ask you, who are your people? The people who get you through your day, who help you see what God is doing in your life, the people who point you to Jesus every day. Now is the time to take out your paper and in the first box that you have there, I want you to write the names of special people in your life that you are thankful to God for and make a promise to pray for these people sometime today. I'll give you a moment to do that and then we will join together in song.
a reading of Genesis chapter 28, beginning at the 10th verse. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. Has anyone ever said to you, Go to your happy place. Mental health professionals use this thought starter to help their patients relax. So I ask you today as your spiritual health professional, what is your happy place? The place you go to to find rest for your body, mind, and soul. For many of you, that place may be in the church building, full of memories of being fed by the Spirit renewed by the words of forgiveness and absolution, nourished by the bread and wine of Holy Communion. For others, your happy place may be your home, which you consider to be a safe haven from the busyness of life, and where you are surrounded by the love and care of your family. Still others of you may think of your workplace as your happy place, the place where you are in your element, accomplishing tasks, being energized, and actively serving people. How about you? What are your special places that you are thankful to God for? I want you again to take out your paper and write in that second box those places that are special to you, even those that we long for and cannot visit in the midst of pandemic. And we'll give you a minute to do that now, and then we'll be right back. Now that you have made your list of your special places, I want you to think with me about the reading from Genesis that was just read. In this reading, Jacob says of where he is, how awesome is this place? And why does he say this? Because he says, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. It was in this place in the dark of night where he stopped to sleep. Why was he in this place? because he was fleeing away in fear from his brother Esau, whom he had wronged. But what happened in this place? Jacob had a dream of angels ascending and descending on a ladder to and from heaven, and he heard the Lord assure him that, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. Jacob awoke and built an altar in that place and called that place Bethel, 
which means house of God. What we learn from this story is that the place itself may not have been that special to begin with. In fact, it, it originally had a rather unattractive name of Luz, but God made that place special by his presence, and Jacob recognized that. The fact is that we need to recognize, too, that every place we find ourselves in is a Bethel, a house of God. God is with you as he was with Jacob wherever you go. What can you do to bring that fact to light in every place you are? You don't have to build an altar in your cubicle, but you can put your a favorite Bible verse on a post-it and put it on the side of your computer. You can put a picture of Jesus on the wall next to your kitchen table. You can wear a cross necklace to a party. Whatever it is, put little reminders of God's presence in your life in each and every place. And thank God every day for the places where he has put you to praise his name and live for him. The miracle is that because of God's presence with us and his blessing that surrounds us wherever we are, every place can be our happy place and our place to be. God is the foundation upon which we build our lives in every place we are. So wherever we find ourselves, may we rejoice in song. reading our good news comes from the book of Matthew the sixth chapter therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life 
what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor weep nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added to you. We have a lot of stuff in our lives, don't we? Our homes are filled with furniture and TVs and computers. Our closets are crammed with clothes. Our cupboards are stacked with plates and dishes. Our pantries are stocked with food. On this Thanksgiving day, we take a step back to say thank you to God for our many things. But today, I want you to thank God especially for your favorite things. You know, the song from The Sound of Music that goes, Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. These are the things that Julie Andrews says help her when the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad. When she simply remembers her favorite things, she says, then I don't feel so bad. Those are the kinds of things I want you to think about right now. So take out your paper again and write down in that third box a few of your favorite things, the things that bring you comfort when you are feeling sad. And I'll give you a minute to do that now. What is it about these favorite things that gives us such pleasure? Is it that they remind us of a happy time, or calm us down, or make us feel special, or just plain make us feel good? All of these things are good, of course, because they are symbols to us of the goodness of our God. But our reading for today gives us a caveat about thinking too much about things as well. Jesus tells us point blank not to worry so much about material things like clothing or food. Thinking too much about material things can take our focus away from God and the things that really matter, like forgiveness, salvation, and heaven. The things of this earth are not worth comparing to the glory that will, that will be revealed to us in heaven. We need to keep our perspective clear and remember that the things of this earth will ultimately pass away, but the things of God will last forever. On this Thanksgiving day, we do indeed thank God for the things of this earth, especially our favorite things. But we are called by God most of all to think of the things of his kingdom first and not let things of this earth take center stage in our lives. When we put God's things first, everything else on this earth that we treasure will serve as a window into what God has in store for us. 
So let us thank God now for all the things he has given us by joining once more in song. will end Lord in your mercy and the response will be hear our prayer Lord God you have blessed your church throughout the world and throughout time with resources necessary to spread your gospel message to all the earth we thank you for providing the people places and things required to make the church grow and flourish in faithfulness to you Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Lord God, on this Thanksgiving Day, we thank you for the ways in which you have blessed our nation with a bountiful harvest and the freedom to worship you without fear. We pray you would continue to guide the people in government that our nation would make wise decisions that improve the lives of all its people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this place we call our church. Help us as a congregation to love and support one another in our mission for you and to preserve this place as a beacon of hope and care for our community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray on this Thanksgiving day for the homeless, the hungry and the poor who do not have basic things that we easily take for granted. Help us to find ways to provide for all those in need during this special time of year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, for all the ways you bless us in body, mind, and spirit, with people, places, and things, we give you all our praise. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. As we look for the coming of the kingdom, let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in gratitude, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.